Hi, everyone, and welcome. Today is September the 8th, 2018. It's Sunday, and we're at the Human Colony Hupolo Saturday webinar. We have a little bit of an echo, so we apologize to you, but we're trying to fix that. Um, today in the room, just to tell you, we have Ruth, Thomas, Steve, Stephanie, Stephanie, Sheer, Sheer, Michelle, Lucia, Lucia, Lila, Jim, James, Jim and James, we have both of them. Ian, Eva, Don, Dave, Christine, Amanda, and Elisa, and myself, Kara Newman. And who do you have in your room, Jim? I have Angie and Chiny Sean from Dublin, Ireland. And I have let's see, David. I have Jamie, I, John, I have Will Mitchell, and I have Ray. So we have a nice house full here. Yeah, we have a big, we have a big group. So I'm um, just to tell everyone just a little housekeeping uh, information on Friday nights, uh, run by Ian Hicks. Now we have the oh, there is, there is Ian. He is there. Sorry, uh, we have the uh, Hukolo practice group for channeling. So you can just uh, type in. Hukolo practice group and you can join the group and every Friday they're having uh, channeling practice. So if you're wishing to practice your channel, you can, you can show up there. And uh, also for $10 a month, you can help support human colony and be, join the Hukolo club, become a Hukolo club member. And it just gives you access to all of the webinars like this one today, but also to the many different programs that we have going on at human colony. And it helps us, keep the lights on, keep our website up and, and stuff like that. So it's all appreciated, everyone who is a member. Thank you so much. And Jim, you've got something coming up, right? Yes, um, I just wanted to give you an FYI, everyone. Hmm. I will be heading out to Machu Picchu on the 22nd of September, and I won't be back till October 5th. So there'll be no channels, private channel sessions in that area because their Wi-Fi is very spotty. And so I wouldn't want to make a channel session and then have to uh, cancel it because of Wi-Fi issues. So I will not be doing any sessions between uh, September 22nd and October 5th. And we're going to be filming in Machu Picchu uh, with Will and Angie and Mark Zinzo. And um, the four of us are going down. And we just feel like this is going to be a really very wonderful trip for many 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 reasons and the information that will be gathered will be um, important and we've already uh talked to god about this many many times and he is saying go 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 so we're going well go so, go is awesome i think i told you my dad was really I went there many times and he absolutely loved it so i wish you the best experience there yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you all for the positive responses on the book. We, If you want to do a review, please do so. Even if it's not positive, we still want reviews because we need people out there to know what's going on with it. Um, mostly the what you write is important. And we got one review from England and one review from this side of the world. But uh, we need a, a couple more reviews. So, um, where's the site you can do that? The Amazon. Amazon.com Amazon is where you can do a review of the book. And it's out in audiobook now, too. So, uh, for those of you that were, there is some typographical errors and things of that nature. The um, editor wasn't that great. So, we have to apologize for that. But, all in all, the information is really good, I think. And um, we'd just love you to comment on it and see where you're, uh, see where, what information you would like to hear more about. So, yeah, well, the book is, I think the book is good. Stands a few little, little typos. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that book. It's really well done and the information is beautiful. So it reads very easily. Thank you. I really liked it. Yeah. It was really, I think it's really oh, good. Thank you. as a tool for- We got a couple, a couple really wonderful reviews from people. So it was really nice. And people tell me uh, when I do sessions sometimes that they enjoyed the book. So yeah. 
I, well, I, I know a couple that. people came into the group of human colony just after reading the book. So it's, it's, oh, it's interesting. getting out there. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, just for, if, before we start, uh, who, who wants to do a blessing in the room? Is there anyone? I was just going to ask. Blessing in the room. Blessing. Anybody? Yeah. Sean, Sean will do one. Of course, he has Anybody? to do one. Will will do one. He has to also. <laughs> I, I yes. demand it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what anybody about in, out in there? The room? Anybody? Ruth? Lisa? Don? Ava? Anyone on our side? Don't okay. be if don't be afraid. Um, if you're being called to do a blessing, do it. Uh, also, just before we do the blessing, um, remember there's a we have a there's a member of Human Colony who lives in Australia. Her name's Carice, uh, Christina Palacios. I just mentioned her to you earlier. Yes. Um, she and I talked earlier today, and uh, she was saying to me how she was so glad she had gotten to see her dad. She's come back from Chile, and she just sent me a message on Facebook that um, her dad's now just passed away. She had gone to see him. He was ill. So if we can just send some blessing and comfort to her, that would be yes. really good. The That'd be beautiful. Thank you. Okay. All right, you guys, on your side. Go ahead. Okay, who will be first? Me. Sean? Yes. Sean is coming to do the first one. Oh, yeah. Great. So you have to be near the mic. Oh, yeah. So kneel down probably is probably the best way so they can see yes. your face too. All right, come and see. Uh, it's no. about my face. Uh, a little more. Uh, hello. Or just stand right here. Oh. Here, you want me to? No. Yeah. Uh, right here and that's it. Now kneel. Yeah. Yeah, there so we, we go. Right over right sure. shoulder and there's the microphone. Okay. I okay. can't hear a word you're saying, Karen. I was saying we can hear just fine right where you are. Yeah, he doesn't have to get okay. right on it. So, <laughs> okay. if I'm loud for you, Jim, I'm sorry. Oh no oh, problem. Uh, yeah. Shunaya tuna yata ya koto koti ya sunya ya ya wakaya ti shia sutuna wa ya na na tawa na ya kisi ti ato tana na wa ya te wa shia nolo tata ro koto to ya ta suto de ya na ya ala koto di ya shia ya ya na ya to wa ya suto no 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 ya ta salala ni ya wa ala kia sha sha tuna wa kapata ta e ya suto la la ya ta i te wa ya sha sha koto no di ya to pada de ya na 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 e ya to wa sha ya ta koto ti. Sikiatanawa, Tanayate, Thank you. The Spirit of God will soon be very strong on the earth, and those that will hear will fall to their knees in admiration and spiritual admiration of God with love and kindness to one another. There are so many words here that need to be spoken, so many thoughts that need to be brought forth, and so much example that needs to be shown to the world that it is almost impossible to bring this message in in its full entirety because it is so massive. The love and understanding that God wants you to have for one another is uncomparable to what you have experienced in this world so far. It is uncomparable to understand what unconditional love really is when you have not really experienced it or seen it. But God's love is now going to pour out over the world and show you what his unconditional love is really like what his truth is really about, what his personal relationship with you is going to be. It is going to change 
the way you think. It's going to change the way you see things. But it is not going to make you sad. And it's not going to restrict you. But in the just the opposite is going to free you and make you full of what it is that life is all about and what joy has to offer and what compassion can do and what blessing is really all about. Praise God for his word is true, full, and will never be forsaken. Thank you. That was beautiful. Yeah. Will. And that's why I love Shiny Sean. <laughs> Shiny Sean is so epic. So epic. Tihiarna tikiti tarasata. Ul tawarna hiasa. The beauty of God will shine through today and lift all of you up into the places that you belong. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so just to go through them, we had some requests before we got started and back to my list. We had Elijah and not Elijah. <laughs> we had the Ashtar Command, uh, hybrid children, especially one called um, Aubrey. Merlin, Grindel, Merlin, Grindel, Danyard, Danyard, and Takur. And I don't know if there's anyone else. I just want to say I don't know who. Anyone else? Say, who, uh... Go ahead. I don't know who I need to speak to. This is the first time, and I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what I'm doing. All right. You'll you'll feel it. It'll resonate with you when the the time is to speak. But most people will be able to answer most questions so okay okay um also uh just because we're having this echo issue you guys um how about i'm not hearing it now so that's a good thing um but just can if you can just for the sake of the webinar mute immediately after you talk and then re unmute as, if you do need to respond again, just to keep it at, at the biggest minimum. Um, also, so thank you for that. And also, uh, I see Sheer requested. Who is that you requested, Sheer? El, it went flying by my eyes. El Toshin. Okay. Is that right? Sheer? El Toshin is one of the L groups, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, that's that was the last request that I saw. All right. So we're ready to go when you're ready. All right, I'm going to do a, a slight meditation. Everyone pray with me and um, it's a beautiful day. And I feel a lot of the spirit. I feel a lot of love and, and that, uh, just inspiration today. So let's see who comes first. Greetings, I am Elijah. Of course you expected me. But today I will be short. Mm -hmm. I will answer three questions because that is what God wants me to do today. I will answer three questions and be on my way. What three questions would you have to ask me? If you have a question, please put uh, your just uh, me in the chat and in Jim's room, if there's anyone that has a question, please raise your hand and we can move forward. Uh, Leela has a question. Go ahead, Leela. And then anybody else, maybe come after. Greetings. Uh, hi, Elijah. Greetings. I have a general question to clarify. It. Do we have one uh, higher self or several? There is only one that would call himself the main guide. He is attached to the Oversoul. 
just as your soul and you are attached to the oversoul as well, but in a different way. It is that the over the oversoul is guiding you all the way through this life. It is not that you are ever disconnected from it. And there is not more than one oversoul, but there are several guides. So do not do not question the guidance that comes because it may come from a guide or it may come from the oversoul itself. So therefore Lift up your heart when you find guidance coming, when you do a meditation, to find that your soul is connecting to a greater place. Find that you are one and in harmony with the oversoul, your soul, and the life that is your own. Thank you. Anyone else with a question? On your side? Or in Jim's room? I have another question. Okay. What is the very short question? What is the future of the English monarchy? That is to be determined. I cannot tell you the future because there are decisions to be made. However, the monarchies of the world will change in many ways as time moves forward. You see, there has been a great leadership in some monarchies, and other monarchies have left the ruling actually to uh, groups of people, such as congresses and senates and and groups, parliaments, etc. So the idea of a reigning royal family seems a little outdated in many ways. However, still many uh, planets and species have kingdoms because it is that they found a certain group, a certain family line had special interests in ruling the, their planets. And so the future of monarchies on this planet is in question to some extent. But remember this, there are many decisions to be made. Also, there are dictatorships on this planet that are in question as well. And some of them call themselves by other names. but. The action of a dictator is obvious. Okay, thank you for that. Lucia has a question. Go ahead. Hello, Elijah. Hello, it's Elijah. Yeah. yeah. Hello. I am. I, I'm hearing the the feedback, so I'll I'll, I'll speak very slowly. Um, he, he can't hear it. He can't hear it. Okay. Um, it has to do with the reincarnated souls uh, of those who were close to Jesus. Um, and I'm wondering if they're coming back on earth at the moment for a mission. And also, are these individual souls or are they part of a group soul? That is a good question. They are individual souls, but they have many attachments in spirit because they, are, they may seem similar in their attitudes because God's attitude runs through all of them. But they have different perspectives of God and teach slightly differently the way God loves and God answers prayer and different things. But all of them are perfect in their alignment with him. Now let me say this, there are many of that group from the era of Jesus that are coming back right now because that energy is necessary at this time for the ascension. That energy must come and show itself as a true force on this planet again because many things, many truths and many purities have been lost over time because man adds and subtracts 
from scriptures and words of God to manipulate the people they must add these things so they can take control otherwise the people they feel will spread out but God wants to deal with each individual person himself he does not want someone telling you what he is saying he wants to tell you himself in some ways that he is not doing now because you are feeling disconnected from God's love and God's purpose and God's power. Some of you are reconnecting now. But remember this, if you are in God's will, he will be speaking to you and through all the things that you do. You will know what you are doing because the light is on you. You will know what you are doing because you will feel his energy in you. You will know what you are doing because your example will set a standard and will draw people into you, will make people understand that God is with you. And they will want to be with you because why? You will be full of joy, love, happiness, a sense of humor, understanding and love, compassion, unconditional actions toward them as individuals because God will know them as they are and not snub them or not make them feel less no matter what station of life they are part of. God will lift all up. God will take the haughty and bring them down because they need to bow before God and understand why he has come and why they must understand his energy, his love, and what he is doing here. Many have ignored God for all their lives. Many have been taught that he is not really important. Many have had an empty spiritual life and do not even believe in spirit guides or connections to the oversoul. These kinds of thought process says will come into question. God will challenge every human on the planet at some point with some form of action. He must have their attention as he will have yours. Thank you for that. We, technically, there's been three questions, but there's only been two people. Is it possible to have one more question or no? If God permits and he does, I will answer another. Okay, Lana, go ahead. Elisha, good morning to you. I love you very much. And you make my day when I, I listen to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, uh, I have a question about our commitment to uh, loving someone in our lifetime. Uh, I understand in spiritual realm, we don't have those restrictions, but what are we supposed to learn here and, and here in vacations of falling in love with one person in our lifetime? Is it something that um, we need to, um, how, 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 how do I process? I, I think you went in and out, but I think you're asking how to process a certain relationship is that correct right in right. certain relationship and uh, what does god want us to um experience in one lifetime would he uh, want to experience falling in love more than one person or staying with the same person the whole life 
Oh, that is a good question. God's will is sometimes not clear when it comes to love because people have differing ideas of how love should be and differing ideas about how love has been presented to them in their lifetimes. Think about what I just said. Love is something pure, something beautiful, and something that permeates through your life. To be in love is to know that there is a sensation along with that admiration one to another. Something that is more personal than it is even social or even spiritual. It is a spiritual thing, of course, but there are those that have been in relationships and made oaths and promises to those persons and realized that they were not in love with them. However, in order to truly be right with God, you must speak to those persons if you wish to disconnect from that relationship. And there must be an agreement because if one does not agree, remember this, both of you went into this agreement together. And if one does not agree to separate, that is a problem. And you must discuss it until you are in unison about what to do. And then you may move on to somebody else or something else. But remember, you have made an oath. Oaths to God are important. They are covenants. He keeps his covenants with you. He keeps his oaths with you. And you should keep your oaths one to another in a true way. Now, sometimes it's very, very difficult when the other person is unreasonable. You may talk to God about this and see if he is in agreement with you that the other person has a stability issue. There are these times when stability issues will come into question. If there is a stability question on the other side, or perhaps even on your side, let God intervene with that. And if there a separation is needed for safety's sake, or for the sake of continuation, let that be a separation that God has granted, that God has said, yes, I grant you that peace to move on. I grant you that separation because you are in danger or you are dealing with someone that has unreasonable circumstances attached. It is a difficult thing to make these kinds of decisions. Difficult because many of you still love that person in some way, or they may be doing it to you and they still love you in some way, but the relationship cannot move forward. Let God be the judge here. Let God be the answer. Pray diligently. If you do not pray diligently and you just interrupt his covenants, his oaths, that will not please him. But he may understand and he will forgive you. But there may be some consequences. Maybe not here, but you may have to answer for it somewhere else or in another life.
I hope that you understood Elected. that answer. Elected. Yes. I'm so grateful because a lot of times what is in conflict with what God wants. The words are exactly uh, in confirming what I want to do and what I'm uh, feeling that would be the right thing. And and I appreciate how you can appreciate for all possible situations. I hope you have for people who well, go through this. Well, if one of you is not in alignment with God and the other is, then there is a separation already. Pray about that. Right. I, I definitely will. Be an example to that person of your godlike intentions, not that you wish to discredit them or bring them down in any way, but that you must move forward in positivity in god's love and understanding and see how they respond to your actions in god it is easy for me now so i will continue doing that and i appreciate your encouragement I love you very much, and God loves you sincerely and beautifully and completely. Yes, yes, I love you too, yes, I love you too. Much love. Thank you very much. Um, there is one more question that would be pertinent for you. So again, very well to push the envelope and I appreciate. Uh, well, I only was saying three questions because I think I take up too much time. Well, you think incorrectly, but, my friend. Okay. <laughs> Lily Pad uh, has a question and she said, I'm taking care of an 82 year old male. He's scared of dying. He's scared of dying. And he feels guilt about his sin. How can I help him not to do Tell him this. Look directly into his eyes and tell him, God has forgiven him of all his sins. Now he must forgive himself before he moves away from this world. Tell him that you love him as well and that you understand these things that have happened during his life. They were indiscretions, but does not every man, woman, and child have sin of some sort in their lives? But God does not hold on to the sins that they have committed, but looks at the light and the good things that they have done. Perhaps they feel that they have not done that much good, but God is searching for all the good things that they have done, all the beauty that they have seen, all the things of positivity that they may have passed on to someone else. So tell them, do not be frightened for your soul, because God has a hold of it. He created it. Should he let it die when he loves it so much? No. No, he won't. Thank you for that. We have other questions, but we can hold those back for uh, whomever comes next. You're always welcome, Elijah. You're always wanted, and you never are here enough for enough time. So thank you. Much love to you. Much love to you.
I am the one you seek from Ashtar Command. Thank you. Um, I'm sure Don has a question for you. I know what his question is already. But go ahead. Okay, I would like to know, yeah, um, like to know um, why you ceased why you use, cease, uh, application, of power application of power to me when you learned my star name. It was not that I ceased, but I disconnected from your star family. There has been trouble between our families, and I do not wish to bring any more of it into the light. It is not that I have anything personal against you. Our families just disagree on how to manage things and how to take care of things because, remember, you have come into star families as a creator being and you will do it again. And these families that you come into do not work the same as creator beings. All creator beings are in agreement in some ways. But star families, earth families, and other families within the cosmos do not always agree. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you understand? I understand, yes. I am not against you in any way. I just do not want to break family ties. Understood. Understood. Perhaps there will be an agreement at some point. I would like it resolved. I would like it resolved down the road for, sure. for sure. I would certainly like that as well. But I am not the leader of the family that is doing this. Mm -hmm. So I bid you a graciousness, but I cannot move forward at this time. Understood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for much. answering my question. Answering my question. You are welcome. Blessings. And if that is the only question that there is for me, I shall move on. But if there are others, I will take them. Yes, there's a question, and, and question. I don't know about your room, but Lucia has a question. Go ahead, Lucia. Hello. I'm wondering how best can we help you here on Earth? Here on Earth. Actually, we are helping you on Earth. You cannot really help us too much at this point. Until you become part of the galactic family, you are limited in your help for us, except for prayer and for well wishings sending energy by energy forms but we help you along as much as we can with as many endeavors as we can your gertrick near has hands-on help for you we do not believe that that is a correct way to help you but we do intercede with conferences and mental attachments at time when we feel that people in authority need to move in a more correct manner how can we ask you for help you, for help? you always do we see where help is needed without you asking we do monitor all the most important figures on your planet and do have contact with them in one way or another. So we directly interact with their thought processes. We do not usually interact with pedestrian thought processes because they cannot make much of a difference. Not that that is putting you down or saying that you are less, but we go to the top 
for where the, that is where the decisions are made and that is where the help is most needed. Of course, we believe that each individual has rights and we believe that you are important in deciding who your leaders should be, but we cannot interact with each one of you because there is not enough space or time for it. Thank you. However, if you feel that there is a reason why we should interact with you, we will make exceptions. Very well. Thank you. Is Thank there you. other questions? Not in this. Not oh, in this. sorry. Ava oh, does have sorry. a question. Ava. Ava. Hi. Thank you for talking Hi. to me. Um, are you helping our you president, helping our president um, with his thought processes? His thought processes we cannot get through to. He is not listening to us, but to others. We will try to get through to his thought processes and have in the past, but he is conflicted about what to listen to at times, but he has his own agenda and he feels that it is the most correct one and he will continue to move forward with it. Not that we disagree with everything that he does. Some ideas that he has processed are actually quite good. Others are flawed. But we will continue to move forward with as many leaders as possible. Can you, are you allowed to tell us if um, it's true that um, President Trump wants to um, have martial law very soon and arrest a lot of people? Uh, who are guilty of, guilty of crimes. If he does such a thing, well, let me put it this way. Although he may have that idea, everyone in his council has put it down. This would interfere with all things on the planet in some ways and will bring his demise much sooner. He does not want that. And therefore, martial law will be a problem for him if he brings it about. I am not saying that he is thinking of that because I cannot reveal his thought processes. That is not what I am here to do. But I can tell you that it is not something that anyone in his cabinet or any of his advisors would agree to. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I do think that is all the questions. That is all the questions. Very well. Thank you for coming. There is someone else wishing to come. Thank you. Greetings, I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. Thank you. Uh, many, of you Thank you. Uh, many of you have asked me to come, but I am not sure exactly why. I know that you would want an update of some sort from our perspective, and that is to say that there is a lot going on on your planet uh, geographically and geothermically. We have a lot of volcanoes and earthquakes. As you know, the, the largest earthquake ever recorded was just recently within the last uh, few weeks. It was in Indonesia. It was 750 miles deep and it caused an 
two or three uh, earthquake in that area, which caused a lot of damage. We are looking into that because that is a incredibly deep earthquake. And this tells us that there will be many aftershocks. When something that deep occurs, the earth is bound to see more of this. The weather, of course, is always an issue. We have heat, heat waves and dry spells and hurricanes and tornadoes and many, many things of this nature happening all over the planet that are unusual, maybe not seemingly unusual uh, uh, phenomena, but in unusual areas. Places that are very hot are very cold now and very places that are very cold are very hot now and and places that get very little rain are, are getting a lot of rain and places that get very little rain are getting oh i just said that but anyway it was it is that the weather is topsy turvy as i learned that term recently and carla from australia i am getting your messages do not worry Thank you. There are um, there. We have many questions. I don't know about in the room from Jim, but uh, we can take one from there first. And then we can. There is in yeah. this room as well. Greetings, Ticker. My name's Raymond. I know you, Raymond. Yes. Speak. Long time. Yes. Something <laughs> that's gone through my mind and a few of my friends in daily life. <laughs> Can you inform us on what's going on with our technology, like cell phones? Oh, yes. Computers and whatnot. Because phone calls have been dropped or not even connected. I understand. Remember this. When there are so many earthquakes and volcanoes happening in your, on your planet, the whole surface is disrupted it, to a certain extent. You will feel that um, vibration all the way around the world. So you may have uh, interruptions in cell phone activities and things of that nature just for that reason alone. However, there is a great amount of solar energy that is disrupting things as well. And if you look out through the solar system, there's many things happening in the solar system at this time that are unusual. Wind storms across the whole planet of Mars. Um, hexagonal storms on Saturn, I believe. And there are, are different things happening in, in different parts of the world uh, that are due to cosmic effects as well. So yes, you're going to have interferences at this time because there is so many different kinds of energies involved in your planetary makeup not to mention that you have fourth dimensional portals opened at this time bringing in more energy than ever before and people are uh, also becoming aware of that also mother earth is bringing out energies from within her that have not been seen in a long long time You are not, I do not hear your voice. Oh, sorry for that. Sheer does have a question. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Tikka. How are you? I am well. And yourself? Yeah. Okay. Um, I am in spring break, but it seems that I can't really relax. I feel kind of on, on edge for some reason. Uh, that's probably due to the Earth energies as well. But I understand there's other things affecting you as well. The energy in Israel is very tense, as well as it is in the Middle, middle East, as a little higher than usual. Let's put it that way. It's a calm before the storm, so to speak. 
There are many things being anticipated. I see. And um, I ask for another information which uh, should have uh, been ended. I just want to know, to know uh, it was actually ended and we should figure it out what is it going to do. Well, I you went in and out. I didn't hear all that you said. Did anybody understand that? Uh, maybe no. it should not be said out loud. So anyway, um, it's good to see you. And uh, thank you for the clarification. You're welcome. Let me say something to you, though. I am going to send you an infusion for your uh, stress and nerves and to be more calm. I'll wait till you go to sleep. I see that you've been having trouble sleeping as well. Uh, yes, we had weird uh, patterns of sleep. Of course. We will make sure that you have a good night's sleep. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, other questions? Yes, we have many questions for you. We have about 10 different questions, so we're just going to go through the list if it's okay. Uh, Jim has a question. Oh. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Hi, Tucker. Thank you for taking this. Of course. I made, I made a contact last Saturday and then got home and astral projected, which I didn't know was a thing. And then this whole week I've been um, making, having a lot of activity and feeling like my spirit is being pulled from my body and then forced back in and pulled and forced. And I just want to make sure that wh what I'm dealing with is a positive and not something else and that I didn't invite something and these are my guides or what have you. This is all new to me. It's very, it's been a long week and just trying to figure it out, I guess. Let me ask you some questions. You did not ask any in uh, entity to come in, correct? No. Then you are not possessed. I can tell that by looking at you. But I can tell you this. There are some in the astral realm that want you to do a lot of work for them. You have got to let them know that you need your rest and that you're, this is new to you and that uh, you must calm. I can see you are very stressed. We'll give you an infusion tonight to help you to relax. Where part of the world are you in? Uh, North America, Southern California. Very well. We will make sure that you get some um, relief. But I will look into what is going on and we will contact you. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. I cannot really tell you more until I look into it. Okay, thank you. You're would help, welcome. Would it help for him to ground at all? Would that be something to assist Absolutely. him? Absolutely. Can you I maybe... believe that, Yeah. did Safira help you ground? Yes. Perfect. That's what I thought. Okay. He seems yes. fairly grounded to me. Yeah, he does, yeah. And um, I do not think that um, he needs to ground anymore, but I do think that um, he, he needs to stay grounded. And so if I could tell you how to do that, that would be good. Um, keep your feet flat on the ground and... Uh, picture yourself as a tree rooted in the earth and bringing energy in from Mother Earth and that your arms are the limbs of a tree and you're also reaching out for energy from the universe so that the blend so you have a balance do you understand and yes. so therefore keep that energy balanced and they should not be able to manipulate you as well but I will t look into it and see what is happening okay thank you very much you're welcome. We've lost our echo, which is really wonderful. So yay, Jim brought in the, he, he, when he asked his question, the echo went. So Jim, that's awesome. <laughs> good job. There I don't you know go. what you did over there. <laughs> okay, uh, Lana. Know. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Sorry about that. Did you have something? Did you want to add? No, no, I'm good. Perfect. Lana, go ahead. Greetings, uh, Sukur. This is my first yes. class. Greetings. I uh, this is my first di direct interaction with you, and I'm a little nervous in a good way. <laughs> um, and what prompted 
me to speak to you is a, a recent um, uh, description of a very significant dream that my son had. And we, we just need some clearance, on, uh, clarification on that, if you could. Um, and my name is Yana, and I live in uh, Northern yes. California. Yeah. My and what is the uh, Rocco, dream? What is yeah. I'm sorry. What is the dream? Oh, okay. uh, so so there there was a um a, a lady that was speaking to him and saying that a device has been prepared for him for the purposes of overcoming gravity or levitation, and she was giving instructions to a very short statued person who was actually making it, and it's a green stick with buttons that he used in that dream. And his expectation was that he was, in, in that dream, he, had, he got an impression that this will be some kind of a gift given to him eventually. And I just want to maybe get some more information about that. An anti-gravity machine is um, not permitted on Earth at this time from uh, out from outer realms. They do have anti-gravity machines on your planet. They have discovered that technology, but they are not sharing it with the world. It is not something that is useful to an everyday person at this time. However, this is going to be a gift for him in the astral realm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he is going to be able to uh, use this. He has a star family, and this is who is presenting this to him. He will be in contact with them when he learns that he has the uh, many other gifts. He's very uh, gifted. Thank you. Would it be uh, beneficial for, for yes. us? to know more about uh, his uh, people that he was interacting with in his dreams? Or it, should we leave it to time? Tell me what the woman looked like. I know that the, I know that the, he was, she was speaking to an elemental, but I don't know what she looked like. Um, she was humanoid looking, but uh, the man who she was giving instructions to was very, very short. Yes, just an years. elemental. Yes, elemental? Very, yes. Uh, this is from uh, her planet. There are right. certain planets that are are in contact with their elementals uh, on a day-to-day -day basis because the planet has reached an an ecosystem that is good for both of them. All right. Are they? Um, do, do they? Um, <laughs> Do they use technology very extensively there? Expensively? Extensively, or, or yes, are they... they do use the, well, let me put it this way. Once, once there is a lot of technology, they start making it seem like there's not any technology. They hide it in trees. They hide it in the sides of buildings. You don't see it when you get there. They know where it is. They know why it's there. They don't want to have it cluttered up, cluttering up their uh, their scenery. So they sort of hide it, make it. Um, but there is a lot of technology there. Yes. Taker, I, I really appreciate it, and I just want to wrap it up for others and encourage you to. We we invite you to assist us. Um, oh, all of our family members because we need some guidance and we just you know it's a little bit yes, new it's not <laughs> all right there's nothing dangerous about what's happening it's just the yes. introduction of a starseed family to this young man and he's going to understand why they are doing this eventually perfect. yes perfect thank you so much i love you very much I thank know. you you're welcome okay um ava has the next question go ahead ava Hi, uh, hi, and uh, thank you so much for all the update about what's happening on our planet that's very precious to us. Um, I have two questions related to my yesterday visits, visit at David's um, home, my good friend David. So first one is kind of silly. Uh, 
he opened a pizza box and then uh, we went to a different room. When we came back, the pizza was gone. We looked everywhere, including the bathroom. So what happened to that pizza if you have any access to it? Well, I do, do not know what happened to the pizza. I was not there. Um, it was not my turn to watch the pizza, but... Yes, it's, it's silly, uh, actually, pizza. but we looked everywhere. I believe that somebody came in and took it. I do not think there was an interaction from any aliens. Does he have friends that visit there often? No, there was nobody. It was just us. Well, there were two dogs, but he put the pizza Well, you know, it could, have been, it could have been elementals, but they usually don't like pizza. Um, they don't? But I will look into that. I don't know. They don't usually like any cooked okay. food. Uh, not not that kind of cooked food, uh, but um, I will look into it for you. Because that's like I, I have know. to say something. I I was putting a pizza in the oven, and I had a pizza box in my hand just when she said, oh, we, "What happened with the pizza box?" And I looked down. I'm holding a pizza. Yes, it's just <laughs> just now. <laughs> All right. So I, I have your pizza. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Karen, I'm not watching your pizza either. <laughs> If it disappears, it it's on you. Yeah. I took it. I took it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. What is it? Eva, what is your second question? My second question. My second question is a serious question. Um, uh, David keeps talking about things which, honestly, I have no idea what's reality, what's not reality. But they are kind of stressful. That's what I'm asking about. He believes that... Um, we need to basically prepare for major change. We have to like get water or whatever supplies because um, our okay. president wants to make, um, what I actually ask already, the martial law and arrest people and CIA. So what okay. is reality? The reality is that no one will be able to prepare for the changes that are coming. No one, because if you prepare one way, it will hit you a different way where you are. If you just happen to be lucky and prepare for it the correct way, it's probably a one in ten chance. But there are many changes coming to the earth, and it's not because of just because of President Trump. Um, there are geo uh, thermic changes. There are there are earth changes that are coming, and there are. Uh, places from outside of your country that are going to be experiencing changes as well. So <clears throat> being an alarmist about these kinds of things will not help. You're just bringing negativity onto yourself. You're just saying, oh, I'm, I'm a fright. You're afraid. So lose the fear. If you do want to prepare with a little extra food, water, and things of that nature, it's fine, but don't be fretting, don't be afraid, and don't be alarmed, because some of these things, negativity wants you to hear these things so that it will build fear within you. Negativity wants everyone to be afraid all the time, but God wants you to trust him, love him, and know that he is good and will protect you. So if you're in fear all the time, you're going to draw more fear to you. So you don't want to do that. That absolutely makes sense. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ruth has a question. Go ahead, Ruth. This is Safira Ruth Trinity. <laughs> Hello to yes. Kirk. Uh, nice to, nice to talk to you again. Yes. Nice to see you again. Thank you. I have three questions. I will make them concise. So there is a uh, meditation that the gentleman who spoke with you before, Jim um, yes. Rowling, if I got his name right, sorry if I didn't. He used a meditation called C5. This is from Dr. Spencer. And my question yes, is, Oh, my question is, when people do that, are they opening themselves up to any 
um, aliens to come to them? Can they direct who they want? No, D5 is a specific energy, and so not every alien is uh, adapted to C5 energy. In fact, only certain uh, densities are open to C5 energies, and uh, humanity is really not one of those densities that really has a handle on it in some ways. I mean, they do and they mm -hmm. don't. It affects human humanity, but it doesn't affect them as much as it affects fourth dimensional beings. I see. So if I did the C5 for an ET activation, would that work with me? It works to a point, yes. It does open you up to some extent. It's There are other things that are more, uh, can do more activation for you. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Well, would you recommend for the audience who's listening, if they would do a C5 activation, a meditation like that, what should, should they protect themselves first? Should they, what should they do? Well, no, no matter what kind of energy you open yourself up to, you should protect yourself as well, because there are those mm -hmm. realms that do use it, of course. So, but you're not inviting in um, entities. You're just inviting in the energy. It's not that the entities are that energy. It is that mm -hmm. you're opening up portions of the brain with this energy or portions of the body with this energy. It's not that the energy itself is a species or an alien. Okay, thank you so much. My second question, you're well aware that there are some assassinations and a recent assassination attempt on another planet in the Pleiades. My question yeah. is, how can this happen? Why isn't there enough telepathy to catch, to catch it before it gets that far? And how can you investigate it? How is it being investigated? These beings may not be telepathic, and they may not be sensed by other telepathic beings. They could be from outside that particular world, or they may be uh, cloaked in a way that no one can see where they are or feel them. Hmm. Yes, I did consider that. But um, how, how, who would, is it a, is it just a planetary investigation? Do other are you involved yes, in investigation? Just a planetary investigation at this point because it is something that hasn't happened on that planet for about 250 years or something of that nature, and so that is why it's such a big deal. Is it? Yes, I guess. Um, I, I tend to think it's somebody wants the politics to move in a different direction. That's why it's happening. It, absolutely. That is a one, one definite reason for it, yes. Okay. It is also okay. to frighten the people. Remember what I said about fear. Whenever you yes. have fear in the people, they can be manipulated much easier. So this is yes. an attempt to get fear into the, the hearts of the people so they can be manipulated by an outside force. That is my opinion. Okay, thank you. My last question. Um, it's a little more lighthearted. <laughs> I was told years ago that I used to be a queen in France, and I don't know if you're the right person to ask. Um, maybe I should go to a psychic here on Earth, but uh, do you see anything like that uh, you're from where you are? I can see a lineage of being in royal families. I do not know what country it's from. Oh, okay. Thank you. Much love to Kurt. I'll let everybody move on. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, um, we have we have some questions from the chat. Um, I'm going to start with Peter's question. He has a twofold question. He was he was wondering about what kind of effect infusions have on uh, longevity, and then he also wanted to know if there was something that can be done, especially for cancer. Of course, um, the infusions that we send are mild. Mostly there have been some strong ones, but mostly they do not affect longevity. They do affect immediate health now if that is a, a health that Affects your longevity. Yes, perhaps it does because it will help your health But there are infusions for cancer. Yes, we 
We have energy infusions for cancer. We also have a way of getting rid of cancer when you come to the ships, um, but it has to be a close-up solution. The thing is with uh, doing these kinds of infusions over long distances, they're not nearly as effective. And so you will need quite a few of them. When you come to the ship, you might need two sessions, two operations, and the cancer would be gone. It wasn't clear if the question we was. Way, we have a way of capturing the vibration of the cancer and then tra transferring it out of the body. Okay. It That's one way to do it. It wasn't clear if he was asking for himself or for another, but maybe he can clarify that. That is all right. Okay. Um, Ecclesiastes 88.8 would like to, this was a question he originally wanted for the Ashtar command, but probably you can answer as well. He wanted to know if the Ashtar command is in contact with the beings from the great central sun. Yes, we are all in contact with the beings from the great central sun. The, the problem with the beings from the great central sun is they don't communicate very often. Uh, they have their own agenda. They're not trying to help Earth in any way. So they're not really interested in that at this time. They, there are some of them that are, but the majority of the beings from the great central sun are not interested in saving the Earth. They're interested in saving the sun. You realize that these beings live for a great deal of time and they see that there is some, the, the sun is having some problems right now. And so they're having some uh, uh, with the uh, solar flares and the grand solar mi minimum and all these different things. These are not things that they usually have to deal with. So they're more interested in their own problems. Okay, thank you for that. And then there was a, there, there's just two more questions from the chat. Um, let me just get to the right one. I've, I've missed one, I'll have to go back for it. Uh, Krellick, who we know for a while, he says, I met with a person in the astral last night and she asked me if I still had universal love in my heart. Could you pass on the yes to her? I don't know her name. Very well. I will, they are listening now, I am sure. You're, the planet that you are contacting always listens to the webinars. It is galactic news. This is like a TV program for them. Oh, great. Hi, everyone in the galactic. <laughs> everyone wave. Everyone it's a little different than that, but yes. <laughs> okay. We're, uh, we're hi, here. everybody. <laughs> okay. He also asked the question, uh, what? He wants to know if there's any messages for him. And he also has the last question of what uh, do space faring civilizations trade with? So answer whatever one. Who do they with. trade with or what do they trade with? He said what, but maybe who is also a good question. It depends on the civilizations. Some civilizations are in need of certain products and energies so that other civilizations are not. So... The canine group is interested in trading with the lupine group, which is the wolves, and they're interested in uh, trading with um, m some of the other non-humanoid groups because that's where both of their uh, things come from, is trade with other planets and other species. Now, they do trade with the Octorians, the Syrians, the Kior, um, and some of the other groups, but the trades are very limited uh, with the can the canine people because they don't really need a lot of the things that Octorus and the Syrians have to offer. Okay. And then the question about if there's any messages for him, is there? The, the message is that they have been... Uh, lately, having a little more difficulty getting through to you because of the Earth energies. Um, usually, you would have a constant contact or at least regular contact with the canine world and some other places. But because of the Earth's energies, they're having a little bit more trouble communicating. Okay. 
And then Tracy has a question. She wants to know um, if the Yelda Both, I hope I say that correctly, entity has been destroyed. It has many names. It has been, it has not been destroyed, but it has been sent away. It is not right now in our galaxy. So that is a positive thing. Okay. That is all I know at this time. The, the blue avians have procured it and sent it out. Seventh dimensional beings are also uh, doing a lot more protection around the earth at this, at this point. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Now we're going back to our room and, and I just want to check on your room. If there's anybody that has any questions on your side, is there any, anyone here? It looks like uh, I am no longer needed. Well, you're needed still here on this side. So. Oh wait, there is a question here. Okay. What? Hello, sir. Greetings. Um, I was talking to somebody, and she had mentioned that she was experiencing extreme emotions. Would this be an individual thing, or something that the new all the energies that are coming in are causing for her, so that maybe I can well, assist? I would need a little bit more information. Is there a family turmoil going on or is there, what is there going on? Um, I don't know anything about that right now at this point. Extreme emotions meaning from one end to the other, like a bipolar situation? Yes, like extreme sadness, just crying over very little things, just. Is she pregnant? Um, no, I don't believe so. Well, that would be one answer because when the hormones are all uh, a flutter, then these different emotions will come and go like this. It seems like something is happening hormonally with her. We will have to look at her and see what kind of uh, hormone imbalance that she has. It sounds like the female hormones are out of balance. And, and you know who I'm talking about? You yes, I do. You're very good. I connected to her from you, but she is she is she is married and has a child. I believe. Yes, I got that. Um, yes, her. It appears that her hormones are greatly out of balance, and that is what we're, is causing this. Also, that the Earth energies are disruptive, and so that may cause also some ex, extra uh, imbalance. But we will check with her. Okay, yes, because I offered assisting with healing to help her. Yes, speak up. They can't really hear you. Yes, because I offered assistance with healing, and I wanted to just get some guidance and how to help her. Sending energy is wonderful. You're, uh, you already intend to help her, so just send the energy. Much love. Another question in the room? Yes. Come forward and speak into the mic. Oh my God. Greetings. Greetings. Um, I've been experiencing a lot of spiritual awakening things yes. lately. Um, I feel like I've been seeing past lives. I've met my twin brain. A lot going on. I feel like I've been having um, maybe spirit guides trying to get in touch with me. Definitely. And I want to know what should my next step be or do okay. I have like a direct purpose? Correct. Oh, very good. Lots of questions. Did you hear them? She was very soft. No, we didn't hear. Did you them. hear her? Oh, could, no, uh, no, we did not. Ask? Yes, I was um, talking about the awakening experiences I've been having lately, and uh, one of my questions is: um, I feel like my spirit guides are trying to get in touch with, with me, and what should I do? And then, secondly, I was asking if I have a direct purpose or mission. Correct. All right. The there are several answers to that. First of all, yes, your your spirit guides are trying to get a hold of you because you're in the midst of a spiritual awakening. You're you've just noticed so many things. You and your the information is flowing in very quickly, and that causes a lot of questioning, a lot of confusion because you are feeling that there there's something there that you're not sure of. Your spirit guides do want to speak to you. You can speak to them in your meditations if you can reach that deeply or you can do a session with someone or but 
the thing that is about your mission, those things that are not awake in you yet are part of your mission. So you really can't be told what that is until you're awake to them. But you do have healing energy in your hands. You do have healing energy in your eyes, forehead, wrists, and, and many things. The thing is about this also is that they are awakening you very quickly for a reason. That means you're one of the people that the young, younger generation that is going to be aware ahead of time. And you're going to know things that others will not know. And so this is a time when the third eye is opening. This is a time when information is flooding in. Relax. Try to relax and bring that in in a proper manner. And then do a session. Have somebody bring in your higher self. They will enlighten you to many different things. But right now, that information needs to settle in you a little bit because you're so excited about this information coming in, aren't you? Yeah, there's a lot. There is a lot of information. I see it. It's like rushing in. Mm -hmm. And so you need to relax a little, take it in and say, ooh, this is a lot of information right now. Mm -hmm. But I, your spirit guides will be able to put it in in a little bit of an order for you when you're ready for that. Only you will know that time. And the, you, when you're meditating, call on them. to, And when they answer, then you'll know that it's ready to hear some of the things that they have to say. Not all the time do, you, do people hear their uh, inner selves speaking. But at the appropriate time, this will happen. But if you want a session, that's another thing too. You'd be able to speak to them faster. But um, it's up. That's up to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on with you. I see that. A lot. <laughs> and a lot of a psychic energy opening up. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been experiencing psychic energy uh, just recently? Yeah. Uh, can you tell me what you experienced? There's so many things. <laughs> oh, so many things. She said there's so many things. But okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. All right. Very well. I will. I would like to have a session. Yeah. You. Okay. We'll, we'll discuss that later. Yes. Very good. I have one question. Yes. Can you tell me if a cap was just placed on my head? A cap? We can't hear in the room. I can't hear in the room. She said, was a cap just placed on her head? And I'm, I'm thinking that she means technology of some sort. And the answer to that is yes. And the reason for it is for back pain. Thank you. I don't okay. have a question, but I have a statement. I just want to say thank Come you. Come close. Oh. Come up, Sean. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Oh. I want to send you my love. Oh, well, thank you, Sean. Okay. I appreciate that. He said, thank you for coming, and I want to send you my love. Is there any other questions? Many questions. Many questions. Christine has a question. Right. Christine has a question. Excellent. Greetings and blessings, Picard. Greetings. How are you? I'm. <laughs> well, that's always in flux. Always in flux. Yes, a loaded um, question, as we um, say. Yes. Um, you were talking about infusions. Now, infusions. Now, infusions. They, um, they, um, I'm hearing an echo. Hearing an echo. <laughs> um, infusions, um, infusions, um, connect to, um, uh, connect to uh, uh, changes to the DNA, DNA in the cell. In the cell. Are you correct? Yes. Which means it's, which means slow. it's slow. because the you, DNA I didn't hear that last DNA. part. It's slow. One, one second. One, um, one second. Just a second. Caitlin, just can you please leave? Yourself because, yourself because it seems you're the one unmuted. You're the one unmuted. Um, um, any changes to the DNA, DNA is very slow. Is very slow. Yes. Am I, am I, yeah, it's correct. When dealing with DNA, DNA is, it has its own speed. You have to understand that when you, um, DNA created you in the womb, and that was a very fast experience. Then it slows down, 
as time goes on. See, as you're an adult, your DNA just re is now just responsive, basically. And it does not have any control over the aging process because it was not given that information to stay young forever. So you have to understand that at this point, when people are older, the DNA reacts rather slowly in the system compared to when they were younger. It acts a lot more quickly in the system. So when um, you're getting an infusion with DNA, it has a tendency to uh, infuse at its own speed. But usually the alien infusions uh, go into the junk DNA and infuse a little easier there because there's no uh, disturbances. But still, they have to interact with the DNA throughout the entire body. Every bit of the body has DNA in it. And so when you get an infusion, this infusion has to touch every single bit of the DNA for it to be fully infused. And that can take some time with certain people. Others, it goes faster. Some feel it right away. Some feel it within days. Some feel it within weeks. But it, it depends on the person and how their DNA reacts to that particular infusion. Now, if you have a high amount of that particular DNA in your system already, say you have a high degree of Octorian within you, the, the, and you're getting another Octorian infusion to build that up, it may interact much faster because it, it understands it has the same uh, information to just in a greater degree to transfer through through the dna does that make sense to you yes it does um i was i also wanted to um talk to you about um earthing which is um being barefoot in um earth and pulling um uh getting the electrons um okay. the first time the first time i did it with my hands not just my feet but with my hands um they were just buzzing like crazy um, yes of course and i went around looking for a cat <laughs> that wasn't feeling well and i couldn't find any of my cats and the dog behind me she didn't want any of it there was just too much energy there so, was too much energy for it the thing is remember when you if you are going to do uh, do this and get that energy when you uh -huh. work with an animal, make sure your hands are moving. Yeah. And because if you hold it still on them, that's way too much energy in one spot. And remember, yeah. the solar plexus of the animal is on the back, not in the front. So the right. solar plexus of the animal, your chakra system is different than animals because the solar plexus is on the back. Okay. So keep yeah. that in mind. And if you hold energy right on the solar plexus, it'll drive them crazy. They'll run. So she just did. keep it moving. Keep it moving. Okay. Then um, this, the second time that I put my hands on the earth, um, I didn't feel anything happening. But um, the only thing that was really changed was I was sleeping better. I was actually going to sleep. But the third day, um, I didn't sleep very well, but you know, I slept almost all day <laughs> to sort of make up for it. What? I don't know what's going on. Okay. The energy that you're receiving from the earth is a healing energy. So therefore yeah. you, and you realize that. So it's doing a healing on you. You are the one that's being healed. And so if you slept all day, you needed that healing energy for a reason. And it, it put you down so that it could work. And that okay. is what's happening. Okay. It's working That's on, actually, it's working on your hands. It's working on your elbows. It's working on your shoulders. Okay. And yeah, it's working I, on several different areas. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it was you who told me that um, it would help with the arthritis because the arthritis in my hand was that's good. Yes. Thank you so much.
Blessed You're welcome. Be. Thank you very much. Um, Lila has a question. Go ahead, Lila. I have a few questions. Blessing to the galactic viewers. I am sure oh. you are you are very entertained yeah. by the humans. Oh. And blessing to you, Takuo. Thank you. Uh, they are entertained by humans all the time. Yes. <laughs> The bad things we cannot be enter uh, we they cannot entertain they, us. <laughs> they have watched some of your television programs and are baffled. Ooh, I don't even watch them. Do, do they know Kar Kardashians? I don't even know how to pronounce that clan. Actually, they've taken that <laughs> off of their network because the children were being affected. You see, very smart. So. Uh, First, uh, Ram is going to be almost one year old. Is he already speaking full sentences and how he's doing? Of course, of course, yes. He does? Of course, yes. So what, is he saying something uh, wonderful, something specific or something crazy? Well, still a child, so he's not saying anything that in depth or that philosophical, but he uh. is speaking full sentences and uh, taking care of himself quite well. Oh, wonderful. I had a dream with Red Dragon and uh, on the Lion Gates open, and I would like from you the uh, meaning. It was, a f I saw a red dragon flying, huge. And uh, what is the meaning? It was the first so time that- red dragon flying? Yes, I saw a red dragon flying in my dream. Well, they're awake now. And there, actually, we weren't aware of the the dragons that were under the Himalayas. Uh, they're actually a few different colors, but there's some red under the Himalayas. So Brown. they are waking, yes. So they are awake now as well. So why did they come into my dreams? What is a message from them? Well, or because anything? you're a dragon, you're a dragon lady. They connect uh -huh. with you and they just wanted you to know hmm. all right then you know uh i'm listening often to david david wilcock he's doing a wonderful awakening uh job on gaia and i would like to know if i have a soul connection to him i do not know but let me check one moment oh actually you do um, but I will not go into that right now, but you do, yes. Is that positive or complicated? It's complicated, but positive at the same time. You see, I knew that because I have this very strong energy connection to him. That is wonderful. I can um, rely on my instincts. So uh, the last question would be about the... Uh, a financial crash. I am not worried about the financial crash because it's nothing to crash in my bank account. Uh, it is more in general because everybody is talking about how is that uh, proceeding. Well, eventually your, your economy will implode, which means that they have so much debt they cannot handle it. And the thing is about this, most every major country is in debt most every major country and so eventually the economy system as it is will implode the reason for this is that the do the currencies used you only have money to use to buy things this is a huge flaw to have only one system of buying things money because it will overload itself and fall apart. But others, other species, other systems, other un understandings of, of how to trade and uh, how to get along make money secondary. It, it is still there, but it is not the major way to trade. It's only for luxurious things. That's the only reason why some species have monies is for luxuries. Everything else is used in trade, for uh, artistic trade, for intellectual trade, for uh, building, 
for mechanical understandings. It's it's a it's a wonderful system because you don't depend on money. You know this very you know, active this positive very group, positive White Drug white Society drug and White and Hearts. White Are you aware, about, aware him? about him? I know White Dragon Society, yes. Mm -hmm. And the White Hearts? I am aware of them, yes. Okay, so uh, can you say anything about what they are doing or better not? Okay. Well, they're they're pushing their energy into the earth and helping with the ascension is their major job at this point. So they will be doing other things in the future, but that is what they're majorly doing at this moment. They are actually uh, just awake not long, and they're expecting, they have two eggs, I believe, and they're expecting children. So that is um, something that is exciting for them. The White Dragon Society are the real dragons or humans? The White Society is humans. The White Dragons of the North are dragons. Oh, oh that I know. Oh. I understand. Thank I you. Understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Very well. We're getting close to the end here. Is there any more questions? Yes. Um, we have a, we have a, we're going to try to limit everybody to two questions. Five questions in only 15 minutes. So, Hello, Tukar. Hello? Hello, do you hear me? Yes. Very good. Who am I speaking to? This is Amanda. This is Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Hello. Hello. On our last interaction, we detected an odd energy about me, and we're going to investigate it. I have never heard an update on it, and I just wanted to know what was discovered. It's not, it's, um, not dangerous. It was an unusual energy because it hasn't been seen in this side of the uh, cosmos for quite a while. But, of course, it's not really surprising that a lot of species that have never been heard of before are now making contact. Now, uh, they are related to the LEI, which is a snail-like uh, a, a snail uh, species, but they are a neighboring society, the Loala. Loala. Uh, Loala. Lo I'm sorry. And they are sort of snail-like also. They are a little different in the, their evolutionary uh, status. They're slightly behind the LEI, but they are, they are making contact with uh, the solar system at this time. And they are very friendly. Um, they are um, not humanoid, but for some reason they they are looking for ambassadors on the planet as well, and um, they will be around certain people checking them out. Does this have to do anything with my constant saving of snails that walk in my path? Yes, it does. <laughs> They're always underfoot. Well, they appreciate that you understand that every species can evolve. Yes, I always find them in worms in my way, and I hook them off the side. <laughs> so that is probably why they have been around you. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, how are You're Leela welcome. and I connected? How are Leela and I connected? Um, well, reptilians, dragons are non-humanoid, and so are snails. So all non-humanoid species sort of like to hang together a little bit. And so you do have non-humanoid friends. And you actually are, you actually uh, have some starseed families in some ways. I believe that you had a dragon family at one time as well. Yes, I felt that before. Okay, thank you very much, Takur. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay. Um, well, while we're waiting for him, uh, go ahead, uh, 
Go ahead, Michelle. Caitlin, you'll be after Michelle. Hi, Takur. How are you? Good. Hello, Michelle. Hi. I just have two questions. Um, could you tell me how open my third eye is? And could you open it some more for me, please? All right. Let me check that out. Your third eye is at about 32% open, which is quite a lot. That's a very, very wide. Um, a lot of people, most humans are at around 8 to 10%. So having a, a 30% open is really high. No, not many humans have it much higher than that. And you, you do seem to have a lot of information that has come in. Um, to open it a little more, they said they would rather hold off for a little while with that. You have, you're still, okay. uh, you're still uh, bringing in information from the last opening, which was not long ago. It was open about 1%. And so you still have some information to uh, put into your systems, but uh, probably in uh, five or six months, you'll be ready for it to open a little more. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Let You're welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Caitlin, are you there? Okay, he seems to have gone. All right, go ahead, Sheer. Hello once again. Greetings. Um, actually, I want to ask you about a dream that I had. Uh, I will do it very quickly. It was on the 21st of August. I, I had a dream that I saw a huge gate, a, a green metallic gate, and it was rumored that it was a gate for a giant species, and it was in Israel, although I felt it wasn't in Israel, and it was a very vivid dream. Very good. I know the, the gate that you speak about is on Easter Island. Um, it was for the, the group of giants that that lived there. You know the the faces on Easter Island? Yes. The very large stone faces. These were carved in the uh, likenesses of that species. They were a very friendly species. It has been recorded that when people went to Easter Island, they were greeted by these giants. And uh, this is what you were seeing. You will have some contact with them. Okay, um, also you mentioned earlier uh, seven density beings. From my understanding, yeah. seven density, it's God. Seven density is in the God realm, yes. There is lower seventh density and higher seventh density. So these are lower seventh density, but they are still in that realm, yes. Do they have a name? They did not give it. They call themselves seventh density beings. Uh, okay. But they have been very, very helpful. Let me explain. There's, there are a few of you out there that are experiencing incredible attacks by negative entities. The seventh density beings are the only ones that have been able to stop these attacks. Even some of the creator beings that were around the earth could not do it because they're not equipped with uh, the creator beings are not really equipped with technology, but the seventh dimensional beings are. And so they had developed something that would stay stave them off and creator beings could stop them, but n not fast enough. So above creator beings there's technology like why why do you need technology in those levels i do not understand it myself but they do have it and it is important that they are using it right now okay thank you all things are possible my friend <laughs> okay um catalin has a question are you there catalin 
you are you muted? Are you unmuted? Okay, uh, we'll try to come back to him last. Go ahead, uh, Lucia, go ahead. Hello, Tukur. It's Lucia, but you know me as Mimi. Yes. Yes, hello. I'm so grateful and honored that you're for your presence today, and we haven't seen you since the Dansville workshop. So. Well, I haven't anyway. Yeah, um, I, I have some questions about the Dansville workshop and the significance of all these the, the soul gathering that um, took place there and the long-term significance of this is, was there one? There is, there is a significance. The people that were at each workshop were meant to be there by design. Um, it was a great connection. It was a great learning experience. And these people are your peers and are the, the ones that are slightly advanced and are moving forward with advanced uh, information. Yes, I, I must say, um, Sheer and Jim and others I know of have had a challenging week to say the least. And so I just wanted to say you're not alone. And myself, I've been easily triggered out of alignment so many times. And um, I, I'm just wondering, is there something you could tell us, some particular advice, some practical advice on how to stay grounded and balanced with one foot in both worlds? Yes. Um, it is difficult. Let me tell you to stay balanced, especially when so many uh, things are happening around you and so many uh, negative things are trying to get to you. Now, the thing you must remember is most of those things are human correct yes so you must look at them differently you must look at each human as a an example of god even though you may not they may not be an example of god they were made by god and you must look at them as if god is there and listen to them even though what they say is not godly the reason why I say this to you is that this brings you into a perspective that you can treat them on a level that is higher than what you would normally perceive them at. Um, also, unconditional love, which is very, very difficult. I don't know anyone that has that, that deal wrapped up. <coughs> but it is part of your training <clears throat> to try to love them in a way that and be an example to them in a way that they will understand and that is different for each person sometimes but it's still out of love still out of understanding of who they are not treating them necessarily real differently but looking at them for who they are and seeing who they are now at the workshop it was not hard to love everybody wasn't that correct <laughs> yes it was very easy very easy so now you've seen what that love is like you have to transfer that from the workshop into the everyday realms that's not easy that yeah. is not easy yeah. but i can tell you this you have been a wonderful example to many so don't give up you are still shining it's difficult you lose your temper every now and then because you are human but is it righteous indignation or just anger if it's righteous indignation don't feel guilty about it if you're standing up for what is right if you're standing up for uh, unfairness towards another person, don't feel bad about that. Sometimes you have to raise your voice to get things across because sometimes in unrighteous situations, your louder voice is the only voice that will be heard. Does that make sense to you? 
Yes, I. Yes, I. I, I, I see the truth in what you're saying. It is true. And I know that you understand. And there has been times when you need that righteous indignation because it is part of the answer to the question. The thing is, if there is someone being treated unfairly, if there's something going on that isn't right, and a soft voice is not being heard, you must speak. Thank you. I, you know, I know the time is coming up so close. I just wanted to know and just brief you and just about my son. I just think it's time for me to start training him spiritually. He will start to. You see, your example is important to him. And without that example, he will not be trained up in the way that he should go. So you need to continue your positive example. Don't push him too hard because that is part of his dilemma is everybody is pushing from every angle. You must understand that he feels a little trapped. Tell him that he is free to speak. Tell him that he doesn't, you don't want him to feel trapped. You want him to be, feel free. So let him have that little bit of freedom. And, and I know that he has to do certain things. There's no questions. But the thing is, in those places where you can give a little leniency, allow it. Thank you. Much love. He is a good boy, and he has talents. He also is conflicted, but he will come out of that because he will understand that you love him unconditionally and that there is nothing that he can do that you will not love him still. Thank you very much, Dr. You're Thank you, Lucia. Sorry for the mispronunciation of your name. Mm -hmm. um, there's just we have just one more question. I know we're at the top of the hour, but uh, Catalin had asked if you could tell us a little bit about uh, free energy, and then this will be the last question. Free energy is coming eventually, but it is not here yet. That will be the coming of someone special to speak to the world about it and tesla will be part of that answer now remember the world is not quite ready for it yet because no one's paying attention to god and no one's paying attention to spirituality as much as they should but once that starts to happen then you're going to start seeing some very big changes Thank you for that. <clears throat> um, that's the end, end of the question. So thank you to Kerr for much spending love. so much time. Much love to you. Thank you. If you have a last blessing or last thing to say. bring Yes, it. I do. I would like to give a blessing. Thank you. But it will be in my near and tongue. Sure. Mahwa kaho washen zafya. And the Kanda Tatibatan Mukwato Ahariasha Shenzi Tua Wahandi Kira Omwata Lehia Sanjis Yabrat Okwati Angoduri and Zekia. Many blessings to all of you. And now you may ask if there is anyone else that wants to give a blessing, and I will leave. Thank you, Takur, very much for that blessing. Is there anyone You're else welcome. that would like to give a blessing? Thank you, Takar. Anyone in Jim's room or in our room? Ruth? I will do a blessing. Sophia, I will do one. All Thank right, you. Sophia, and then anyone else? Hello. Welcome. Hello. Okay, the guy in the back with his hand in the air. <laughs> I see you. Several hands in the air back there, or the, I don't know, jean shirt. That's who I see. Okay, Safira first, and then 
the lovely jean shirt person who I can't see. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Spirit. Dylan Jamie. All right. Yeah. He will take the broken and make them whole, take the blind and let them see, take those that are deaf and bring hearing back to their lives. He is the one God, the one you should trust. Thank you for that translation. Thank you. Thank you. And then the person from your room. Well, we're going to do Will, uh, me first, and then Will. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. It's Angie first, and then Will. Anybody else? And then Shiny Sean. Shiny Sean's going to clean it up. Clean it up, man. Adi asaneta ashtua aniata asko tua i shashinyata a naniya kwa a a so inaniya wata a. Lift one another up, for that is your uh, mission in life. Do not destroy each other, but entice and in what is the word? Encourage. No, edify each other. They couldn't get the word edify in there. <laughs> that means build up. Teach. Yes. Hahada akasi ichara ta anaska ta ashiya ta asu. So hoka ana chata askasi sa ana titik ais. Arahasiya hata ashishai kiana saka hasa. Ayaka hata ehiya hahnat aish hahaka anana sakai hahar sai cha arata isakai tanawaha. As we travel the world to bring truth, thank you, God, for encouraging us and do, for being with us, for bringing it forth the way you want it to be brought forth to bless and encourage the world the way you want to bless and encourage the world. We give you praise and thanks, and we continue to move for your blessing. Thank you. Mm. Ah, okay. The God that you seek is the God that's within you. Yanai de an yasotoni atanai, Yakanai de alakua ishikia tunuya tanai de asonoata, de anakata i chiano watana soto da e te adoto e a kata soto, Yanana e de ava alakae de ashia. If you would like to receive a blessing, open your heart to God, for He is there to give you all the wishes that are there. He is not there to hold you back, but to entice you and to edify you and build you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. We have one oh, more. Okay. Is that it? One more? Is no? that it? We got everybody? It. All right, perfect. I think we got it. <laughs> Much right. love, everybody. I, I Thank you for all coming. And I Thank love you. Thank you. It was awesome today. Amazing. It's great. It's a great session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shadi Sean, have a great Thank time. You. It's so exciting that you're there. Yes. Thank much you. Bye. Love. Good. Good to see a lot of old friends coming back. So nice to see everybody. Right? Just to right. remind everyone, this has been the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar, and we will see you next week. Jim will be back and. Uh, please, if you are not a member of Human Colony, consider uh, joining for $10 a month. You have access to all the paid webinars. You're in the room, um, and you can help support all of our uh, endeavors. Also, we have, now, we have now been online five years. We, it, it, we're coming on our five-year anniversary. Wow. 
Oh, that's incredible. Wow. That's amazing. That's, awesome. uh, that's when he started Human Colony five years ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it. Next week, we'll have an official fi Human Colony five-year anniversary. And just if you are yes. not a subscriber to this channel, please click the button somewhere down there where my hand is pointing. But you, you can find it. So. <laughs> We'd like to have you. All right, everyone. All right. Much love to you. Much love. See you next week. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye.